Hello cave dwellers, welcome back to our Trash to Treasure 486 series and in this part it's all about the audio. But this isn't just any old audio upgrade, this goes way beyond a standard Sound Blaster card upgrade because I've finally got my hands on one of these beauties. It's a Roland SC88 and this is the VL model released in 1996 a general MIDI and Roland GS compatible device that can bring the soundtracks of those Sierra, LucasArts and many other games to life in ways that I couldn't have dreamed of affording with the £799 price tag. With the SC88 handling music duties, we do still need a standard sound card to handle digital sound effects and to give us the correct port for the Roland device to plug into. Instinctively many retro gamers would immediately reach for a creative Sound Blaster card and that's exactly what I did until I came across this card. It's the Audition 32, they're available in abundance on normal internet channels, brand new and for less than £15, sometimes as low as £10. I came across a really detailed and useful review for this device on Phil's computer lab and I'll provide a link to that in the description of this video. But in summary, the features of this card that made me go for it include this OPL3 FM synthesis chip, a far newer iteration than the model chip you'd find on the Sound Blaster OR32, a game port and more importantly MPU401 compatible port which is required to plug our SC88 in. And if an external MIDI device isn't for you, those pins at the back of the board are for a daughter board so you can actually add a general MIDI board directly onto it giving you a great combination of that OPL3 FM synthesis and your choice of general MIDI daughter board. All for far less than the price of a used Creative Sound Blaster card. It's not only one of the few brand new ISA sound cards that you'll find out there, it's also one of the best. So now I've got one I can tell you snap them up quick. And if you're still not convinced then surely the included CD cover will convince you. A true 90s montage vomited out of coral draw with added French horn. Outrageous stuff. So now you've seen the kit, let's dive back into the PC and get it all fitted starting with that sound card. The dust still clings to our video card and we will be cleaning this out before the final build as well as dealing with the exterior aesthetics. We begin by removing a blanking plate from the rear of the case and I'll be using this bottom port here which is an extended ISA VESA local bus port simply because I don't want to mount the card further up in amongst all those cables, it's just more convenient down here. We haven't got another full length VLB card to fit at this time and that extended slot is fully backwards compatible with a 16 bit ISA card so in it goes and I'd hazard a guess that this is probably the first card that's ever been in this slot. There she is. As there's no CD-ROM fitted, there's no CD-ROM audio cable to run from the card to the CD drive, so that's all we'll be doing inside the case today. The rest comes down to software and our external unit. So let's put it all back together, pop the case back on, and get the drivers installed. Remember I said I don't have a CD drive? Yeah, well the drivers come on a CD so that's something of a problem here. But no matter, in part one we installed a compact flash drive as our replacement hard disk and I can quickly copy the disks over onto that using my daily PC. Driver installation was very straightforward, it added a line to my auto exec to initialize the card at boot up and it also supplies us with this handy executable to manage the levels and settings of the card. The only change I'd recommend is that the master volume was set to 12 which gave me some slight hiss. Reducing that to 5 removed the hiss completely while still giving me a good audio level. And what good is fantastic audio without decent amplification? So I've added a Denon UDM30 bookshelf amplifier and speakers. This is the youngest piece of kit in this build, at just 15 years old. I actually own two of these, you can pick them up for as little as £30 and priced to performance they're better than any off the shelf active audio speaker that you'll find in a computer store. They're also conveniently the exact width of a modern tower PC so they sit really nicely on top. And when you turn them on, they're extremely friendly. Hello Denon. Hello 
and now it's time to hook up that Roland SC88. If you've been considering buying an SC88, its younger brother the SC55, or any similar devices, well hopefully this is some reassurance to you as to just how simple it is to set these things up. They're not made for computer engineers, they're made for musicians and as such they're really easy to get going. Not that musicians are stupid, you know what I'm saying. A standard MIDI cable connects to the MIDI port on the sound card and the MIDI out cable plugs into the MIDI in of the Roland device. With the device still powered off we switch it to MIDI mode and then we fit a cable from the audio out of the sound card to the audio in of the Roland device. This allows the digital sound to be passed into the Roland device where it gets mixed with the MIDI sound and then passed out again to our amplifier. I'm down to my last phono cable which is clearly too long for this project but it will do for the purpose of this demonstration. So that's the audio out from the Roland into the audio input of the amplifier and that's it we just need to plug it in, switch it on and see if we can get this thing going. Hey Roland, say hello to your new friend Denon. Oh hello! Uh, I don't know why Denon is French now. I think he's just trying to impress her. So our setup is complete and for our first game we'll demonstrate the improvement that this makes over the regular sound. Our first game is The Secret of Monkey Island which we'll first demonstrate in Adlib because it doesn't have a sound blaster mode and then using the MIDI device. Here's the game in Adlib. And now the same intro through the Roland SC88. Quite the improvement. Monkey Island is an example of a game which was written for the Roland MT32. That was a device before the general MIDI standard and so some of those instruments are slightly off. A game which was written to the general MIDI standard however was this. Yes, it's the original Doom, a thumping soundtrack on any sound card, but the Roland takes it to another level. But wait, we can make Doom even more epic by changing the choice of lead instrument on the fly. Let's replace the guitar with an orchestra hit. The general MIDI standard came into effect in 1991. It's a standardised specification for how electronic instruments should respond to MIDI messages. That's the data coming down the MIDI cable from the sound card. 
It also defines the instrument table. So while different manufacturers' MIDI devices will sound different, it will at least play the correct instrument. Before General MIDI became the standard, there existed the Roland MT32, a very similar device to the SC88, and you can often choose the MT32 option in a game, and newer devices will play the music, as we saw in Monkey Island. However, the instrument tables are not the same, and sometimes you get some quite bizarre results. Take for instance our next example. This is Ultima 7, one of my all-time favourite games, and we're listening to the ad-lib soundtrack here. Notice in particular the sound of the birds, and then the noise when the Guardian appears through the blue static. Now we'll switch to the MT32 version of the audio and, well, just listen to what happens. Ultima 7 an example then, where I'll make use of the other capabilities of that sound card we've fitted. It gives great ad-lib support, it gives great sound blaster support, and it's got that great OPL3 FM synthesis chip for the non-MIDI music moments. But those problems are few and far between. Pretty much any game released after 1991, especially by the Adventure Game Studios, supports the general MIDI standard. And as we saw in Doom, that's when a general MIDI device like this comes into its own. Here's another example of a game which mixes both digital audio and general MIDI in its intro. It's Dynamics Aces of the Deep. And there we have it, that's the latest instalment of our 486 Trash to Treasure series. What would you have done differently? Would you have gone with the SC88, maybe the SC55, or do you demand no less than an MT32? Do you want to know more about these devices, or hear your favourite game soundtrack played through it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and come back for our next instalment of this series soon. Until then, here's one last tune for you all. Take care, cave dwellers.